Now let's take a look at a few practical applications of Pathfinder operations inside Illustrator. I'd like you to go ahead and open ghostrobot.ai found inside the 13 Pathfinder Ops folder. And for those of you who were with me in the Illustrator CS3 one-on-one -on -one series, you may be looking at this and thinking, hey, that's that exact same ghostrobot.ai file that I've seen in the past. No, it's not. I've modified the color scheme inside of this illustration. I've changed some of the text around as well. But ultimately, at its core, we still have the very same ghost robot illustration, albeit differently colored, as I said. And here remains this amazing work of Pathfinder Operation Madness. Much of what we're seeing here is hinging on the icons and options that are available to us here inside the Pathfinder palette. So what we have is a magazine cover from the year 2174. And of course, that's fairly hilarious because the very idea that there will be print publications in the year 2174, I think, is absolutely preposterous, but still. And it's a combination of all kinds of live type effects and some transparency effects as well, all kinds of stuff that we'll be seeing in later chapters. But the core drawing, as I say, the objects that make up the robot are a function ultimately of some of the geometric shape tools and the Pathfinder operations working together. Notice over here in the Layers palette, we have a sequence of layers. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the Type layer, which contains all those type elements. Then I'll turn off Pathfinders and I'll turn off Frames in order to reveal this image layer that I created inside Photoshop and then placed inside of my illustration. If I turn that off, this backdrop layer right there, you'll see in the background that we have these ghost vectors right here, which are my primitive objects that I'll be using in order to build up the final ghost robot. And then in back of that is the ghost template rendered in orange. And I'm going to show you how I created that template in the next exercise, just so that you have a sense of how you can use Photoshop in order to clean up and colorize your templates and make them as easy as possible to trace here inside of Illustrator. But if I were to turn ghost vectors back on for a moment and turn ghost template off like so and then I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on some of these primitive objects here notice that most of them were drawn with the ellipse tool so we have a ton of rotated ellipses and a few circles going on inside of this illustration we also have a few items that I drew with a pen tool the most complex of which is probably this valentine heart right here and in case you're thinking, well, gosh, this must have been hard to draw these fingers right here so that both outlines of the fingers, both the left and right sides, are exactly parallel with each other. Well, that's really a function of that outline stroke command that we saw earlier in this series. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go ahead and grab my pen tool right there. And I'll just draw a very simple path on the right layer. Go ahead and switch over to the ghost vectors layer here so that I can draw. And I'll go ahead and click and drag here and click and drag here. And I'm showing you how to draw a finger, incidentally. And I don't like the location of that point, so I'm going to press and hold the space bar as I move it into a better location like so. Then release the space bar and drag that control handle into a better position. Notice this. We've got a white fill and a transparent stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my black arrow tool, click on a path to select the whole thing so that I get the right options up here in the control palette. And I'll change my fill from white to none. And then I'll go ahead and change my stroke to black, if I like, and I'll increase that stroke value to about six points. And then I also want to go ahead and create a round cap. So I'll go to the stroke palette right there, and I'll turn on the round cap option. The join option doesn't really matter at this point because we don't have any corner points inside of this little line. And then I'm going to go up to the object menu. I'll choose the path command, and I will choose this guy right there, outline stroke. And now we have a nicely outlined stroke. I can go ahead and switch my fill and stroke icons right there so that I have a black stroke along with no fill. And we end up getting the results that we're seeing down here inside of the robot's finger. So that's all that went on there. Not very hard to do. My big point, though, here is that all of these primitive objects that I created so far, very easy to throw together, just a function of drawing some geometric shapes, the occasional paths with a pen tool. If you take a look at them, most of these paths don't have more than a couple of points a piece, I think, like this guy right there. It's just two points, as you can see, with control handles coming out of them. That's the extent of it. So very, very simple stuff here. And yet we can assemble these primitives into a complex illustration using Pathfinder operations, as I will explain in upcoming exercises.